Welcome to Dragon Slayer Update, the only show dedicated to Howard Community College's athletic programs. This month, Howard hosts Frederick, the Lady Dragons battle Brookdale, and you'll meet Kara Height in another installment of Dragon Close-Up. Through two months, Coach Smelkinson's Dragons are ranked fourth in the Maryland Juco standings. Next, Howard travels to CCBC Catonsville. Will the Dragons take down their conference rival, or will Catonsville avenge last year's postseason loss to Howard? Bruce Hoosier anchors our men's basketball coverage. The Dragons have won six of their last seven games. During that stretch, Ali Conde assumed the mantle of go-to scorer. The freshman out of Laurel, Maryland can attack the rim and create open looks for his teammates. The Cardinals have played well in spots, but have been outworked in the final minutes of games. CCBC Catonsville held a late lead against Hagerstown, Mercer, and Essex, but all three came back to win. Quinton Jackson is the Cardinals' number one scoring option. Jackson is coming off a 20-point performance against Essex. Howard and Catonsville face off next. Action from the first half. Rodney Jones on the baseline drive. He finds Michael Wade open on the weak side. Wade gets it to go. Dalapa Olubile is matched up with Wade. He forces a tough shot. Quinton Jackson up ahead to Jones. He's all alone. Excellent transition offense from the Cardinals. The Dragons bring a press. Catonsville responds. Richard Lane draws two defenders and dumps it off to Kenneth Nash White for the easy two. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Lane pump fakes, buys some time and banks it in. Joshua Johnson, top of the key, feeds it to Ali Conde. He buries it for three. The Cardinals lead is down to four. Conde makes his presence known on the defensive end. He comes up with the steal and charges ahead. Conde goes up, it's short. James Peters with the follow, Howard's on an 8-2 run. The Dragons work it around the outside. Brandon Spain finds Peters open on the wing, he knocks it down. 45 seconds till halftime, Catonsville works it around the outside. Nash White is looking for Jones. Peters picks it off and takes it the other way. He finds Spain on the break. The Cardinals hustle back, so does James Peters. Howard was down by as much as 14. They go into the locker room tied at 31. Second half, Lane sets a pick. Quinton Jackson takes it to the rack and comes away with two points. James Bartnick gets it to Delapo. Straight line pass to KO. Howard opens the half with an 8-2 run. Bartnick to KO. He gets it to Conde, one dribble, and he's up into his extension and to his jump shot. Conde sinks the pull-up jumper. Number four in Maroon hustles back on defense and he takes the charge. The Dragons are beating Catonsville to the punch. Conde does a great job moving without the ball. The defense is ball watching. Conde makes him pay and one. Big time play for the freshman out of Laurel. He'd convert the free throw to make it a 10 point game. Less than 12 minutes to play. Delapo, baseline drive, terrific reverse finish for the Dragon sophomore. Howard works it around to Bartnick. He finds KO. Coyote sinks the turnaround jumper. The Dragons lead is 12. Bartnick intercepts the pass and sends it ahead to Delapo. Howard picks up a big win on the road. Let's go to Matt Stovall for the Dragon Sports Radio postgame report. Ali, after a slow start, your team got really energized and came back and dominated the game. What sparked that comeback? Well, it was really a leadership from our captain, James Peters and Jazz Harris. They really got us all together and told us we had to focus on the game. Coyote, you had another great uh, game rebounding. How were you able to be so dominant on the glass? Um, well, it all started off because my teammates, they got me the ball in the post. And so that's what uh, Coach Mike was saying, just take the ball to the post. And so they fed me the ball, and that's how I was able to get my points. So it's, it's thanks to them. So Great comeback win, gentlemen. For Dragons Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Up next, the Dragons square off against Frederick. Howard is 1-2 since the Catonsville win. Coyote Ajenafugia is developing into a consistent scoring threat on the inside. Howard's big man is averaging 17 points and 8 rebounds per game since winter break. After missing three games, Tyrell Addison will suit up for the Dragons. Addison won't do Frederick any favors. The freshman out of Baltimore brings toughness and tenacity to Howard's front court. Frederick enters the game with a record of 13-5. 
the Cougars are forward oriented and run everything through Marquis Mazik and T. Tally. Marquis Mazik is arguably the best player in the conference. The 6'6 sophomore can create separation from defenders and score from anywhere on the floor. Howard and Frederick battle for third place in the Maryland JUCO Conference. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, here's an inbounds lob to Dominique Robinson. Frederick's lead is five. Brandon Spain to James Bartnick. Bartnick penetrates and frees up Tyrell Addison for the reverse. The Dragons are holding their own in the paint. The shot clock is down to five. Tim Nelson, top of the key. Nelson gets to the rack with a nice spin move. The Cougars guard has eight first half points. Five minutes till halftime. Kao calls for the ball. He carves out a spot down low and does some damage. Kao would complete the three point play. Tyrell Addison catches the ball away from the basket. Brings Marquis Mazik outside and goes by him for a big time bucket. Keep your eye on that matchup. Second half, we're tied at 34. The Dragons work it around to James Peters. Peters knocks down a three. Howard takes the lead. Bartnick to Jazz Harris. To Tyrell Addison, top of the key, driving it. Kicks it out to James Peters. Peters makes him pay. The sophomore out of Oakland Mills High School nails three consecutive three-pointers to give Howard their largest lead of the night. Frederick's on a 4-0 run. Deron Wiseman picks off the inbound pass. T. Tally puts it away in transition and ties the game. Nelson takes it into the lane, finds Marquis Mazik open in the corner. Frederick regains the lead. K.O. gets free on the baseline. He takes it into the low post and finishes. Five minutes remaining, Nelson pump fakes, attacks the rim. He gives it to Mazik and one. He'd go to the line and give Frederick a one point lead. Four minutes on the clock, K.O. feeds it inside to Addison. He banks it in to give Howard the lead. Tim Nelson looks to create off the dribble. He drives into the lane and gets it to go. Tremendous effort from Nelson. 2.40 remaining, the Cougars go to Marquis Mazik. He pulls up and converts a tough shot. Frederick is back in front. Other end of the floor, Ajena Fouge penetrates and connects with Addison underneath. Howard's front court is outworking Frederick's big men. T. Tally's fifth foul gives Howard possession. The Dragons run a quick hitter for Tyrell Addison, and he delivers with a big time bucket. 19 point night for the freshman out of Patterson High School. One minute remaining. Mazik driving again. He forces a tough shot. Crucial defensive stand for Howard. With the game on the line, the Dragons run another quick hitter to Tyrell Addison. He goes right at Mazik and comes through with another clutch bucket. That makes it six consecutive points for Addison. 23 seconds to play. Howard's lead is three. Mazik picks it off, hits a layup, and draws the foul. This is to tie the game. Mazik fouls out, going for the rebound. After a Peters free throw, the lead is now two. Nelson takes it inside, no good! Addison grabs the rebound, launches it up court to James Peters. This one's over. Howard wins 78-74. Let's go to Matt Stovall for the Dragon Sports Radio post-game report. Tyrell, you play with a lot of intensity, a lot of passion. What did this first game back mean to you? It was very special. And, uh, um, Get, been the first time getting out there to play with my team again, trying to earn their uh, their trust back. So you know, incidents won't happen again. It was very special for me, very emotional. Well, you earned their trust within this game. You were getting the ball at the end of the game. How'd that feel? I mean, big players make big plays. You know, you gotta step up to the plate, trying to be the leader on the team. Coyote, you also in the second half. You, you two, the big men, sort of took over the second half. How were you able to get to the line against Frederick, a big D1 team? Well, our coach said keep attacking the basket, you know, and then uh, he was right. We got the foul call. At first, first half, we, we weren't getting some of them, but second half, we came in and the rest were giving us some of them, so that's how we got to the line. All right, so now we're heading into the final stretch of conference play. We've got the tournament coming up. Uh, how, how exciting is it to be playing so well this time of the year? It's good. we got to keep it up so we can, you know, keep on climbing up. We're right, we're at there right now. Hopefully we can get to that first place, and we're, our goal is to get to Nationals. Great win, gentlemen. For Dragon's Lair Update, I'm Matt Stovall. Joining me in the studio is head coach Mike Smelkinson. Welcome, coach. Thanks. 
Coach, assess your team's performance against Frederick. Um, against Frederick, we played well for the most part. Um, we were able to pull out the win, which is all that matters. Um, first half was a little slow. We missed a lot of free throws and layups. And um, I think we went into the half tied. And I feel like we were kind of lucky to be tied at half. And then um, came out in the second half, and they went zone. So James Peters was able to get, I think, three three pointers in a row. Um, which gave us the lead and then they came back and went on a run of their own and then we were able to come back with another run late in the game and uh, get some key stops um, on the defensive end and James Peters uh, went to the free throw line and finished the game out for us. Now how big was the play of Tyrell Addison who came back to the to the club? Uh, it was huge, um, and you just knew that he wasn't going to be denied. Um, he was just very determined. Um, he was hitting his free throws. He even hit a couple um, jump shots, and he's usually you know, finishing stuff around the rim. He does, usually doesn't step out past the free throw line, but he hit a, early a couple early jump shots, um, and you could just tell it was his night. Now, who's playing big for you right now? Um... Probably our best player um, for the last couple of games has, has been uh, Coyote, Ajina Fuja. Um, we call him KO, but he's just been great for us. He's been hitting the boards, getting a lot of rebounds, um, and he's been our leading scorer for the past, I think, five games. Now, your team has had several comeback wins. You know, what is your strategy as a coach, and how do you react when you're down in a game? Well, um, I'm constantly telling the guys that we're going to win by playing defense and by rebounding. With this group, I'm not worried about the offense, and I tell them that because um, we're explosive and we have a lot of guys that can score the ball. And, um, you know, during huddles and timeouts, I just constantly remind them, you know, we got to play with a high level of energy on the defensive end. Um, so even when we fall behind... I don't get worried about points, you know, I, the points will come. And uh, for the last two minutes, two and a half minutes of the Frederick game, we really buckled down on D and, and got stops when we needed them, and then that won the game for us. So, so far, what's been this team's defining moment? Wow. Um, well, I think actually this last game was a very big win for our program. Um, and I keep telling the guys, you know, I kind of compare this year to last year. Last year we were up and down. We, were, we finished around 500. And I ask them, you know, are, are we going to be an up and down team like last year or are we going to try to establish ourselves as one of the top teams in the conference? And I think this win against a very good Frederick team was kind of the first step in establishing ourselves and, and to say that we're for real. Now, your schedule's been pretty tough this year. You have played against the number one teams in Division Two and Division Three. What did your team take from that? Yeah, well, we, early on we went down to Lewisburg in North Carolina and played the number one team in the country for Division Two. And, um, you know, we were in, it was a very hostile environment, which was good. And, um, you know, they beat us, but we competed for the whole time. And I think experiencing that, um, going on the road against a very good team will um, get us ready for the region. And now when we go play somebody else on the road, we say, hey, we already play the number one team in the country on the road, you know, so we know what it's going to be like. So going down the stretch, what does your team still need to work on for the conference? Um, I think consistency throughout a game, um, especially on a defensive end, being able to play um, hard, for 40 minutes. Um, I think sometimes we turn it off and on. And I told the guys after the Frederick game, um, you know, if we can play defense like we did for the last two and a half minutes of the Frederick game for 40 minutes, then, you know, I think that we'll be unstoppable. Now, right now, Baltimore City is number one in our conference and Hagerstown is number two, and those are your two losses. What's it gonna take to really, if you see them again, mm -hmm to take some victories out of these two teams? Well, I think just that playing 40 minutes um, against the, the top teams, you can't turn it off and on against quality teams. you got to play, particularly defense, 
at a high energy and you know be focused for the full 40 minutes and um, you know against good teams like that even if you play play hard for 39 minutes that one minute might be the difference in the game assess your team's academic performance this year uh, the guys have done a great job for the first semester this year we had uh, Ben Vester got a 4.0 um, James Bartnick at a 3.8, Coyote at a 3.8, a couple other got Josh Johnson 3.5 and I think overall our team GPA was about a 2.66 um, so you know you, it, I was happy that it was above a 2.5 I'd like for it to be at a 3.0 um, but for the most part very happy with the guys and you know it wouldn't have been possible if it weren't for all the services um, at our school, which is just great. Good luck the rest of the season, Coach. Thank you. It's time for women's basketball. The Dragons square off against Brookdale. Will Howard pull off the upset, or will the nation's best rebounding team win the battle inside and escape the Dragons' lair with a victory? Bruce Hoosier has more on this highly anticipated matchup. The Dragons are eager to get back on the court and snap their three-game losing streak. With leading scorer Kara Height on the sideline, Paris Preston will be called on to step up on offense. Preston can win one-on-one -on -one situations and get to the free throw line where she's shooting 74%. The Jersey Blues enter the game with a 10-6 record. Jasmine Davis has been a big part of Brookdale's success. The sophomore out of Tinton Falls, New Jersey leads the team in scoring, rebounding, and assists. Howard and Brookdale take the court next. First half, Dalvon Pinckney forces a turnover for Howard. Paris Preston is there for the takeaway. She pushes the ball down court, buries the shot, plus one. Pinckney's pass intercepted by Jasmine Davis and brought coast to coast for the easy layup. Brookdale out to an early lead, 11-6. Great ball control for HCC as Lene Kimball passes to Sierra McRae. Nice bounce pass to Lakeisha Taylor who banks it home. Seven minutes left in the half. Kimball to Preston, who draws the foul and sinks both free throws to tie it up. Next possession, Brookdale pushing the ball down court. Pass to Jasmine Davis. Over to Lauren Bowler with the soft touch and two. Dorothy hints an inbounds pass to London Todd. Turnaround jumper and drops it in. HCC trails by two. BCC moving the ball around the horn. Palmer to Davis, back outside to Bowler. Takes it to the hoop and banks it in for two. Davis over to Bowler. From downtown, nothing but net. Brookdale goes into halftime with a 28-18 lead. Early in the second, Brookdale inbounds to Marina Lukianov, who hits a field goal to extend the lead by 13. Pinckney with the steal, drives down court, just misses her layup. McCray comes down with a rebound, over to Preston who drills the shot. Preston reaches up and deflects the inbound pass. Patrice Jones is there and takes the rock to the board for an easy layup. Davis passes from half court to Luke Yadnov, who puts it in for two. Jasmine Palma passes to Davis, who dribbles and knocks down two to extend the lead by 12. Brookdale continues ball control. Luke Yadnov to Davis, back over to Palmer, who dribbles and takes it to the hoop for two. Late in the half. Davis passes to Bowler, who goes up for the shot, drains it and draws the foul. Brookdale gets the W with a 61-48 win. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Tiffany Stewart. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Assess your team's performance in the first half against Brookdale. First half against Brookdale, we had a slow start, and then we were finally able to gel offensively a little bit with our transition and running our half-court set, but we took a little while to get started. What did you say to your team in the, in the locker room at halftime? I told them we have some must-haves with this team. We have to be able to effectively run transition. We have to be able to knock down free throws. We're a really good free throw shooting team. So our goal is always to get to the free throw line. So tell me a little bit more now in the second half. Mm -hmm. Second half we, were, we did a much better job of running transition. We made you know, more attempts at the free throw line, we were just able to have a little bit more of offensive um, effectiveness in the second half. Now, how important has your freshman Kara Height been to this team this year? She's super important. She really is. She is a ball of energy. No matter where she 
comes to us, whether she's coming off the bench or whether she's a starter, she's just a ball of energy and she really is uh, a great offensive weapon that we have this year. Now what's the key to executing on offense? Because it seems like there's a little struggle going on mm -hmm. this year uh, in executing. Yes, I think we have lots of players that can score. So we are really, really working on our combination, our offensive combination to be very effective. And we talk a lot about our three layers of our offense, being able to run our half court set effectively, moving off the ball. Then we also talk a lot about transition offense because this team can run. And then, like I said earlier, we're a really good free throw shooting team. So we really try to nail those three layers of our offense. Now, how do you decide playing time? Because you have such a large squad this mm -hmm. year, which is exciting to, to have. Each practice, we're analyzing players. Are they um, effectively completing the things that we're talking about? Are they able to transfer those things from drills to scrimmage? And then we also do a little bit of a, a character dig, like who on, this who on the team is stepping up and being able to play um, team ball and who's positive in practice. So we're able to get down to those nitty gritty things because we have so many people. Who are your gamers though? Because you know you have your practice players mm -hmm. and you have your gamers. Yes. Who are your gamers? I would say I have right now two gamers. Delvon Pinkney is a gamer. When it's time to play, she's ready. Kara Height, gamer. Although um, Kara does bring that energy to both practice and to games, she's also a gamer. When it's game time, she is ready. She's almost in a different zone. Now, preparing for the conference, mm -hmm. what does your team still need to work on? Just getting that balanced offense consistently. We have spurts of that balanced offense mm -hmm. throughout games, but we're working on building consistency, being able to do that for 40 minutes and um, really staying with it. And I think part of that is us growing as a team. Our team is so large, our leadership growing as far as our captains are concerned. So we're all growing. I think we're going in the right direction now. Now, do you have a leader on this team? We, do, we have leaders in different ways. Um, Keisha and Paris are our captains, so they're our official leaders, but we have other leaders. London Todd, who's also a freshman for us, she's definitely an emotional leader. No matter where she is within the rotation, she is always positively and effectively communicating to the team. Our scoring leader, like I said, will be Kara Height or Delvon Pinckney are our scoring leaders. Many, many times though, you'll hear Keisha, Lakeisha Taylor, talking to the team about staying together, staying focused, and remembering the goals that we set forth for each game. Now for a student athlete's life, there's mm -hmm. really two performances that really count. Mm -hmm. It's the playing performance and then the academic performance. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the acad academic performance of your team this year. They've done a really great job academically. This group has by far been my best group. We've had a lot of kids, you know, maybe six or seven kids over 3.0, three or four kids over a 3.5. Our cumulative was a 2.86 or, or something. They are really, really hard workers and they're very interested in their academic future as well as their athletic future. So the type of kid that we're getting here is very, very concerned about their academics as well. So it was not a lot of pushing. We have study hall four days a week and they went without a lot of pushing or without a lot of monitoring. So I'm really proud of them. Good luck the rest of the season, Coach. Thank you. Training with NBA champion Bob Dandridge and former Washington Bullet Enos Watley has shaped Kara Height into a hungry, energetic player. Let's meet Kara in this month's Dragon Close-Up. Three-point Howard basket number 45, Kara Height. My name is Kara Height. the basket by 45, Kara Height. She went to Oakland Mills High School um, right here in Howard County. I mean, they were able to go deep into their playoff, their version of the playoff season. And I think a lot of it had to do with her and her background. Uh, early in the season, I went to see Kara play and I loved her. I spoke with her parents and said we'd love to have her. She ended up committing, giving a verbal to a school down south and then she ended up not wanting to go there and she said she was still interested. I said, I'm definitely still interested. It was actually a perfect choice. I know that she had played some AAU early on and then took some time off. And once she got here, I found out what she was doing during that time off. Yeah, she's been training with some NBA players. Enos Watley, Bob Dandridge, and uh, Myron Brown. 
Uh, I used to get up at uh, 5 in the morning and go work out from 6 to about maybe 10 or 11 and then do the same thing from about 7 to 11 at night. And that was like a, every weekend, Friday and Saturday. She was really working hard and just training, just training, working on footwork, shooting, just her all around game. She can flat out score. Um, what I love about her is she can play in the post for us with her back to the basket and finish strong with her left and her right. And she can also have a great shooting touch. I think she's a scorer. If the ball's in her hand, she will score or try to get a shot up. Uh, she's an excellent shooter. She's the person that we count on when we need a quick bucket. She attacks the basket. And when we need her, we, can count, we know we can count on care. I usually use her in the guard spot. I really do. However, when I need to, I'll put her down low. And sometimes she helps to spark the post players because they look and they say, what is going on? Care, you know, Care is a guard, and yet she's playing in the post. I actually think I throw a lot of teams off because they expect me to be a guard, and then I end up in the post, and a post player is guarding a guard. So I actually think I create a lot of problems for other teams because you're not sure how, who, to, who to put on me. I actually like posting better than playing a guard. Uh, I think she's best outside. She's a guard. Her shot is amazing. Well, in high school, she played guard, but she wanted to play post. So I think if you give her a chance to play post, she can, like, surprise you. Wherever you put her, she's, she'll do her best. Yeah, she's an aggressive player. Offense, defense, block shots. I don't know. I've always been an aggressive player, so. Whenever a game is more aggressive, the more into it I am. She plays as if she has experience, so she doesn't play as if she's a first one. I think she has like eagerness, because every game she wants to go out there and win it. She wants to go out there and like get the job done. We trust her, because she trusts herself first. Um, and she's confident, and when she put her mind to it, she gets the bucket. If she says she wants the bucket, she gets it. Any anytime I get the chance to, to get into the defender's head, I, I'll take it, so I'd love that. Thanks for watching. We'll see you each and every month on Dragon's Lair Update. And remember, go Dragons!